This morning, as we enter into a time of worship, a time of acknowledging Jehovah, the creator of heaven and earth, and a time of acknowledging his sacrifice, which was his son, Christ, our Lord, the one in whom we believe and wait for many persons across the globe are today and over the past couple of days have been participating in the communion, participating in fellowship and a renewal of their inner man based on the commandments and instruction that Christ gave at the Passover table to his disciples. We know that before he ascended to the Father, before his death, he prayed, not just for the disciples, but he prayed for those that would believe on him. And today, we are those persons. We are the ones that have entered in through the door of salvation by faith, not of our own doing. But according to the power of the Holy Spirit that has drawn us, to the Father through Christ. And as we reflect on his sacrifice, in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 24, he said that this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. He was speaking of the blood that would come forth from him. And we think about Christ and we think about who he was and is and the humility that he showed in his life. It is an example. It is a light for us to understand how we ought to be. Not in false humility. Not in false reverence. Many persons try to say what they think is acceptable and do what they think is acceptable. But Christ was focused on doing what was right in his father's eyes. And so as he said to them, take, he broke the bread. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. And he gave them the cup and he said, drink. This is my blood of the New Testament. When we think about that, when he knew he was going to die. He knew what was going to be done to him. And he willingly gave of himself to all that were around him. He understood what was the plan of salvation, his role in that plan. And despite all that he knew, he followed through the steps so that we today could have a glimpse of the path of salvation. Have you ever thought about how blessed you are to have the word of God? How blessed you are to have the Holy Spirit to illuminate the word and to give you understanding? Have you ever thought about how empty the Christian experience would be without the testimony of those that died for the gospel without the testimony of the words of Christ. He knew all things as he walked the earth, as he healed, as he spent time with the Father, many times in solitude and prayer. He knew the future. The word tells us that he had the full measure of the spirit. So there wasn't anything that was hid from him. Many times the conversations that the disciples had in secret, even though he wasn't there, he could ask them about it. Once they came to him. And so as you think about this time of communion and fellowship with God, think about your life and the things that God knows. The things you may think he doesn't know and doesn't hear. The sins, the things that we carry, the habits, the attitudes, the hypocrisy. Hypocrites. 
Christ said it so often. So many of us are hypocrites. We are hypocrites to our situations. We are hypocrites to our lives. But Christ, from beginning to end, was truth. And he lived in that truth. And that is what Christ wants from us. For us to come to the light. Not to dabble in darkness and dabble in light. Or, dab, or abide in darkness and pretend to exude light. He knew and understand. He understood all things. He said to the disciples before he died that before I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. He knew where he would be. He knew where he was going. He knew what the Father was planning for, for mankind. He knew the part that he had to take. And so today, as we proclaim to be children of God, do you know the path that you're taking? Is the path you're taking the path that Christ would have you be on? Or is this the path that you have set? Do you know what is the Father's will for you? Or have you predestined to do your own thing in your, in your life, in your own timing and in your own way? Are you living the life that Christ died so you could have? Just as how he gave the bread and he gave them the cup to drink and he said, this is the New Testament. Where is your testimony? Are you too busy focusing on your life and what you can get and what you can orchestrate and what you can control that you have not looked on the needs of others? You have not looked on the needs of those right in front of you because you are focused on yourself. You're focused on executing the life that is a lie, the life that is darkness. I implore you this morning to come into the light. Christ understood the possibility of how we can become new in him because he said to his father, in verse 36 of Mark 14, he said, All things are possible unto you. Even as he was asking for the cup to be taken away, if it was the Father's will. He, he started off by saying, All things are possible unto you. Do you know that all things are possible unto God? The things that you struggle with. The things that you hold on to and say, I don't know how I'm going to let this go or how this is going to work out. Do you know that all things are possible and the solution to your problem is Christ? Not Christ outside of you, but Christ inside you. You see, a lot of Christians are walking around with, with baggage and stresses and hardships because they're walking with Christ outside of them. It is only when Christ enters in to your heart and your life and your situation that circumstances change. Remember when they asked Christ, tell us of the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is in you. So this morning, as many of you go to church or think about Christ or you're you are participating in the Passover and the season of unleavened bread, is the kingdom of God in you? Or are you doing ordinances? And are you being a Christian in the acceptable ways of things? Are you speaking and walking and acting? Do you have the facade of a relationship so perfectly established in you that no one can tell, but God can tell? For all things are possible with God and there is nothing that is hid. And we must take counsel, not just from the laying down of Christ's life, and his, his journey to his crucifixion. But the words that he spoke. He has told us that his words are life. 
So why are we not living in his word? Why are we living in our own counsel and our own understanding? He said unto his disciples, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Lest he fall into temptation. Are you in temptation? Are you sure that that thing that has beguiled you is not temptation that you have fallen into because you have not watched, because you have not prayed, because you continue to be blinded by situations and people and expectations? Has he called us to watch the world? Has he called us to watch the world? Or has he called us to spiritual things? Are we too busy watching each other? Are we too busy watching circumstances? That we are not watching spiritually with eyes open, with wisdom and understanding and knowledge that can only be given by the Spirit? Are we watching ourselves? Are we too busy watching others and judging others? Are we too busy feeling righteous that we have not watched and we have not prayed? And we pray, but we pray amiss. We pray, but our prayers are empty because they are not filled with faith and they are not filled with truth. You have taken the truth of God and replaced the truth of God with your understanding. You have taken the truth of God and replaced the truth of God with the lies of your own counsel. And so we lie in the bed of our temptations, the fruit of the seeds that we have sown in darkness. We have become beguiled by the adversary and Christ is far from us. As we remember that he became sin for us. We have a hope in him. We have a hope of restoration. We have a hope of oneness, of union. We have a hope of entering as he entered in, in humility, kneeling down before the Father. So too we must kneel before the Father. We must wait for an answer. We must walk as he has instructed. We must be strong in situations that are set to demolish us. We must do the work. We must run the race. We must wait on God. We must believe on his son. For he says to us in Mark 16 verses 16, He that believeth shall be saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He's not a man that he should lie. Because he speaks the things that the Father speaks unto him. And we have a hope and a confidence that not only did he die for us, but that he rose. And he is with the Father. And we who are in him, and if he is in us because he prayed and he said, let them be one as we are one. So I ask you today, proclaiming Christian, Proclaiming follower of Christ. Answer yourself. Are you one with the God of heaven? And the King of kings and the Lords of lords. Are you one with them? For he says, I am he. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. The right hand of power. Not mortal power. Not the mortal building of, of flesh. But true power. Which is in God eternal and him alone. No other God. This morning as you consider the sacrifice and the life of Christ. The humility that he showed. The strength that he showed. The faith that he showed. I implore you to take a moment and think about your life. 
Think about the example that Christ set and whether or not your life is reflecting that light or if that light in you is darkness. Because if that light in you is darkness, it is written how great a darkness it is. Come to the light. Come to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come to the light. Come to the light. Because in him is truth and in him is the power of the most high, holy and living God. Be blessed.